looks like a redfish right here. Yeah, little red. Oh yeah. Sorry, Bonnie. Not since then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, here he is. Oh, let's go, little catfish. <laughs> Hey there, Joe Simes with Salt Strong. Those were a couple of quick highlights from our full day with FWC scientists. If you've ever been curious about what really goes on behind the scenes, like how they're making their decisions to either change limits or eliminate limits on the fish we love to catch, you are going to love this. I'll be honest, I was skeptical. I'm thinking it's going to be a bunch of like science nerds, like taking little water samples and tubes. And it was just the opposite. These guys and gals were so hands-on. They were getting dirtier than I ever imagined. And the amount of time, like, so this little map you're seeing right here, they're doing this uh, literally every single month around the state. In some cases, for over 20 years, they have so much data, it is unbelievable. And those little points he's talking about, each one of those bigger squares is a nautical mile. And this computer generates a new spot, or actually about 125 spots per month for them to go visit and take samples from. And once again, they've been doing this for years and years and years so they can decide exactly what a healthy habitat and ecosystem estuary looks like. I'll let Eric Weather explain a little bit more on this. Yeah, so this is what the computer spits out here. It's a station number, um, the area of the bay, the gear type and the habitat, and then a, a grid, one of those point one by or, or one by one nautical mile grids. And then we also have a random uh, direction and exit of our, uh, we call it a spiral. So if we go to a spot and a fisherman is there, or it's high and dry, it's out of the water, we can't sample there, we can uh, randomly move to a new spot. The spot here was selected in grid 417 at this point, which is on land. So then we can um, move to the north and then spiral counterclockwise here, or this is clockwise around until we hit uh, hit the water. Cool. We'll pull our sample there. So it maintains that statistical validity. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's do it, Luke. Don't yeah. let us down. Uh, I guess we're bad. <laughs> just grab a hold of uh, that hand there. Yep. It's not so we get some filled out. We go, strong, so. <laughs> Which way are we going to be going? We're going to be going this way. All right. But, uh, kind of hold on to it. Yep. Semi-circle. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So, 600 feet, right? So try to go 150 feet. 300 yeah. feet. 150 feet. Cool. So and we're just sitting here close to the trees to make sure nothing yeah, sneaks no past us, right? So yeah. now everything that we're buzzing, they're trying right. to. That makes sense. Freaking out. Yeah. Go you know? we'll right down the shoreline. There's only so much. Yeah. We can stop. Uh, that's another. One. and see, I mean, they can get up under all these areas yeah. here, you know. This but, is pretty cool. You know, it's like, what do they do? Do they, do they try to escape coming through the mangroves? Where do, do they, they run out? Where do they go in the middle, yeah. yeah exactly. We're going to go down the perimeter? Yeah, we're going to walk and we're going to get a little bit better angle on this net and then we're going to start pulling it. Gotcha. Try to splash them out of there. So does, is your side weighted? Yeah, I presume that. It's got leads on it. Yep. That's a lot of drag on this thing. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go to the uh, gym after. Yeah. Come out here for a day. Kind of get on it like I am. Uh-huh. And we're, so we're actually pulling it in? Yeah, we're pulling okay, it in now. It's crazy how much drag this freaking net has. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So we're going inside right, so of it. What you want to do is then Ooh. step on. Oh, there's one right there. Step on the <laughs> other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll hit you. Uh, step on the other side of the net here. So stand here. Okay. 
Or what do you want me to do with the top? Gotcha. Stand there, and then we're just going to, uh, we want to kind of, you want to stand away from me, so we're about stretch the net out. Okay. So, you know, and then we're just going to start yanking it. So your job is you want to make the fish kind of swim out of the net, right? Not come up in the net. Gotcha. Up here, here and get caught up in the squad. Out of the net, just stay out that way. Yeah. yeah. But you don't want to lift, there's a kind of fine gate because you don't want to get too far because then you're pulling the leads off the bottom too. Gotcha, gotcha. Maybe take one step towards me. Okay. And then let's just kind of just, just start yanking on, put your back into it. Really All right. Cool. It's only like half Whoa. the work. Whoa. <laughs> Some serious work here, guys. All right. Yeah, I've seen some action up there. Oh. oh, there goes one. Mill. Really mill. Whoa. Throw it back in. Back in? Throw back in, yeah. Oh, there's, there's a snook. All right, so now we have the bag down. Yeah. He's going to start just replacing. Your hand, hand over hand. Hand over hand. Hand over hand. Let go of the past. Gotcha. I'll hold all that. Hold it. Hang on to all that. That's where it should stay, right? And don't lean into it. Whoa. Catch a lot of scenery. Oh, wow. Watch yourself. See your eyes, catfish. Yeah. So what we're going to start doing is taking out <laughs> all of this. Yeah. Just oh, take out the weeds. This is crazy. Yeah, just watch your hand because yeah, could some, be... Yeah, see some catfish there. Could be catfish, could be stingrays. Yeah, I think there's a big, right. I think there's a big ray in here. Yeah? Yeah, something. Oh, I can feel something heavy. Thanks, so. Alright, just, just watch yourself. So now we'll leave water in it. It's kind of like a rite of passage getting uh, spined. <laughs> I think we have like a 60% success rate of getting spined in the fin. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, yeah make, make sure there's not a stingray yeah. in front of you. Know where pull, pull up on it, you know? Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll get a stingray over there because I heard Oh, that was sound some big. Yep. Tail right there. Tail right there. Right 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 yeah. They're sneaky. Yeah, they are. Well, there's a big one here, I think. Yeah. So a little mass move. Americanus. Sir. <laughs> Red right there. Oh, yeah. oh, we're definitely getting rained on today. You just feel it. Yeah. You feel it in the air. Uh -huh. This one right here looks like, it looks like we're in a cloud. <laughs> yeah, there's that ray. You see that thing now? That Where is it? Where, oh, yeah, there it uh, is. That's a good sign, Christian. Yeah. Okay. Let him go. Cool. I know you haven't worked up a whole bunch, but is there a difference between. Like, is there a Looks like a redfish right here. Yeah, red. Oh, yeah. So I've only not since then, has it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yes, he has. Oh, it's got an old catfish. <laughs> Keep that one. Keep it in there. <laughs> and obviously, it's, uh, you know, this mesh lets all that small stuff stay. Yeah. Thankfully. Hey, where are you going, little guy? Oh. Watch yourself. Right. Yeah. On three. One, two, three. Right. A lot of redfish. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Red he must be in the head. 401. Spine of Mel. 431 on the redfish. Mel is at 207. Um, I got a ladyfish at 353. Snook over. We can do it. 344. What do you think, Snook over 305. 342 on the snook. It's count toss. Yeah, count toss. 72. Keep your number in your head. Pinfish, 76. 68. 70. Okay, cool. So everything basically ends up right there in the middle. Yep. Yep. Center bag stain, it's called. Any holiday up there?
you know, those all names of grass that you've yeah, so we, we get three types of grass here, and they're sort of depth stratified. Uh, you get shoal grass, which is a holodouli, is the scientific the genus. Mm -hmm. and then you get the uh, turtle grass is a little bit deeper, and then you'll get the you know, manatee grass in the, the deepest areas. So these guys are checking the checking the bottom, you know, what kind of substrate is down there, mud, sand, oysters, mm -hmm. whatever things may affect the, the catch. Yeah, holodouli up here, it's all cerogodium and... Like six four maybe. Yeah. Okay. So Characterized percentages so sixty percent syringodium uh, grass yeah. and then forty percent thalassia. I'm looking at the shoreline. I see all red mangroves there. Water goes underneath them, so I'll record that. I'll record the depth at which they uh, ran the shoreline there, mm -hmm. so that we can get an idea of an escapement. You know, fish that can hide out in there. That's pretty awesome. Here it is. Pull That's awesome. Hi, Terry. Yeah. No, I guess catching bait. Measure 10 of every species. Dog out of this Rollers. You got pinfish, manidia. Little pipefish. Up all the bait. All right, after a really amazing day out in the water with the FWC scientist, we got a really special treat. Eric Weather here, he took us and gave us a tour of this specimen room. It is massive, and it was so cool. I mean, they literally have specimens on every single organism and fish species you can imagine in the state of Florida. Some of this has been accumulating for 20 years, and if you're wondering, like, why do they need this? Well, this is how they're determining what a healthy fish or what a healthy ecosystem or habitat looks like. They're able to take little small samples of each and every one of these spots they go to and put them in, contain in, in containers here that will make sure they do not rot or you know go bad, and they're able to take take little uh, scales and take even blood samples and cell samples and just to make sure that we're not destroying them and we're not making massive changes to their biology based on pollution and all the things that we should be worried about as citizens. I thought it was really fascinating. They keep all this stuff. It's super well organized and they're able once again to compare and contrast what different species and organisms should look like versus what they look like, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I mean, they're truly doing this all. There's a fun group of there all based on science and they have everything you could possibly imagine that you can find in the state of Florida. And a couple other things I mentioned earlier, 
I was so blown away that, I mean, one of the gentlemen on the boat there, he said it was the fifth time this month, that month that we did it, that he had been on one of these expeditions, one of these trips, doing the same thing you, you saw out in the hot sun. I mean, literally pulling really heavy 600-foot nets over and over again. It is incredibly tough work. And I also heard from a couple of them just kind of talking and getting to know about them and their families. I mean, most of them either have another spouse that works or they're having to work a job in the nights or the weekends just to really make ends meet. These are people who are not getting paid that much. They're doing it because they love the state of Florida. They love everything about the ecosystem. And they want to make sure their kids have the same opportunities that they did to go out there and enjoy the water. So the next time that you see an FWC scientist or anyone who works for the FWC, whether it be enforcement or in the back office, give them a big thank you. These people are all paid based on grants and some years grants are good, some years you're bad, yet they keep showing up for work doing the job and they're out there once again doing incredibly hard work and not just sitting there behind a desk making, uh, making guesses. I was really, really blown away in a positive sense on just how much goes into this and just how much science is involved before they ever make a decision to close down a fishery or a certain species or make any big changes. They literally have the data to back it up. So I was really, really impressed with that. And once again, thank FWC big time for this opportunity. Now you get a quick little tour from, uh, from Eric here of the, uh, of the sample room. So what did you say? This is the second largest yeah, specimen? I believe it's second largest uh, in, the, in the country here. But. Man, and every one of these is literally loaded. Check out this hammerhead head. Who would have thought? That's a huge giant. <laughs> Yeah. Got sawfish in there too, man. It's pretty Jesus. cool. It just keeps going. Oh, look, yeah, look at this thing. Pretty old monker. Monk, yeah, baby, that's it. It's a monkfish for sure. Wow, that is cool. A little sawfish. Wow. Pretty crazy stuff. Man. Put a short billed spearfish in there. I don't know if the camera can pick up the smell, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. This right is, there. Is uh, oh, yeah, it must be a little swordfish. A little sword. Uh, and this is wild. Creepy. Spotted more, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the kids could spend days oh, there. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Some cool stuff. So we have our big hammer. Yeah, that was a good one. Scale camera. This is wild, uh, Most of these came from like commercial, commercial fishing and catch bait and stuff. Yeah. Like they just bring them in here. So these are all the most common species they're catching here. And then all the scientists have to memorize all these. Can we get a picture of that? Yeah, sure. Man. So you copy them. Scientific name? Common name. So that is it. That is the overview from our day with the FWC scientist. Once again, I want to thank everyone at the FWC for all the work you do. Definitely an eye-opening experience. I had no idea there was that much science and like literally hard work going into this every single week, every month, all year long for many, many decades. And if you enjoyed this, all we ask is that you share it. Share it with someone. Tag someone if you're seeing this on social media. Give us a comment. Let us know if you liked it. Let us know any questions that you had. I know there's probably some things we couldn't cover just in this uh, video. And let us know if you want us to do more videos like this. And then finally, if you're one of our Insider Club members, you get to see the exact spots that we were at and where all the fish were, where the most bait was. And Luke did an amazing job doing an Insider Report on this. And I think you can learn so much from actually taking seine nets like this and seeing exactly how many fish are in different spots based on the trend. So if you want more of that, join us in the Insider Club at saltstrong.com. That's saltstrong.com. You can join the Insider Club, 365-day, 100% money-back guarantee. And it's as little is 27 cents per day. That's less than a cup of coffee, a lot less, especially if you're going to places like Starbucks. So that is it. Thank you guys so much. FWC, thank you for having us. What an amazing trip. We learned a ton, and I can't wait to do it again.